everyone, this is Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make this little necklace like I promised in the last video. This is just an exercise to get you familiar with crimping and the different things you can do with it. You don't just have to crimp the ends and put your clasps on. You can do little different fancy things with your crimping. And as time goes on, I'll do a couple more videos showing you a couple other things. But right now, I just want you to get familiar with some of the items I showed you in the last video and um, show you how to do this necklace in particular so that you can kind of get an idea that you can use crimp beads a little bit more creatively than just crimping your ends. So let's go ahead and look and see what we need for this okay. project. What you will need for this project is totally dependent upon what you want to use. I'm going to show you what I'm using but you do not have to use the exact same thing I'm using. Just use basically the same type of stuff. So what we're going to do for this project is I'm going to use some Edo seed beads for spacers. Now if you have a tiny little pearl you'd rather use, or if you have little metal beads that you want to use, use those. I'm using an Edo seed bead. It's a Toho galvanized silver tone. And then I'm going to use some little 11 oh tiny beads to make the little portion around my um, crystal here. Now, like I said, use your imagination and do a little bit different. This is just supposed to show you how to do the technique more than anything else. So after you have your little spacer beads, an 11 oh and an 8 oh is perfect. If you, that's what you want to use, use those. Then you'll need a crystal. This is a large drop crystal. I believe it's like, oh, 22 millimeters by 12 across, something like that. And I will make sure and put down the size in the captions. It's just right now I haven't measured it and I don't remember what it was. But it's just a large drop crystal and it's top drilled. And what I mean by top drilled is that the hole is literally through the top here. So they drill the hole through the top of the bead. Some of them will have a hole through the bead vertically like this. That will not work with this project. It needs to be a top drilled bead and it doesn't necessarily have to be the same shape and size as mine, but it has to be top drilled for this. And this is just kind of a little silvery tone, smoky color um, crystal. Then, and you can get these in Swarovski, you can get them in Chinese crystal, you can get them all over the place. So you'll just look for a teardrop shaped crystal and that's what you, you can use, like I said, any shape or size. Then on this one, I used Rondell crystals. On this one, I'm going to use some cheap Chinese crystals that I bought a long time ago that I don't really want to use in my weaving because they I have found that the bottoms of them are not real smooth and they cut my thread. But on wire, they're going to work out fine and they're pretty, so I will go ahead and use those in this project. But you can use any shape you want. You can use round, you can use rondel like these. These are actually more saucer, saucer shaped than even rondel. These are quartz crystals. They're a gemstone. These are just cheap Chinese crystals. So you can do it as um, expensive or as cheaply as you'd like. This is a Swarovski. This is not, though it's still very pretty. It's a Chinese crystal. And so this one is going to be a little bit higher priced for me to sell than this one is, which is always good. You want a variety of um, prices in your booth so that people can pick and choose. If there's something cheaper and it's still pretty, they will buy it. There's some crimp beads. We're going to need three crimp beads. I'm using a size two. This is soft flex beading wire. It's medium and I have cut about 22 inches off to make myself about a 20 inch necklace. This is just a little silver tone toggle clasp. You will need some kind of clasping. It doesn't have to be a toggle, but those are what I have. So that's what I'm going to use. Use what you have. Now, if you're not familiar with crimping, if you're not familiar with anything to do with stringing, watch my previous video called Stringing Basics. I show you how to use in detail crimp beads and I talk specifically about different 
sizes and wire types so that you can get your basics and know exactly what's going to work together. Now, let's go ahead and get started with this Okay, project. so last time, in my last video when I showed you how to string, we started by crimping the end with the clasp and then we laid out a design on our beadboard and then we um, put the beads on the string and then cl uh, clasp the other end with the with our clasp and our crimp beads. This project, we're not going to do that. This project, we're going to slide the crystal on first. So just slide it onto your wire that you have pre-cut and find the center by putting the two ends of your wire together and find the very center and just put your bead there. It may move around a little bit while we do this next step. Don't worry about it. We will have an opportunity to straighten it back up. Now, we're going to take three of our 11 O seed beads on one wire, one side. So I'm going to call this the middle. So this is going to be one side and this is going to be the other side. With my right hand, I'm just going to pick up in my right wire, I'm going to pick up three 11 O seed beads and drop them down to the crystal. And then I'm going to pick up my left um, wire and I'm going to pick up three 11 O seed beads and drop them down to the crystal, just like so. Now I am going to recenter this. So I'll put my two ends together and just make sure my crystal is in the middle. And then I will pick up one of my size two crimp beads and I will slide both wires down into the center of the crimp bead. So I'm just going to, you may have to do one at a time. Sometimes you can get them both at the same time. Just depends on how cooperative it's being. So I got both of them through and then I'm just going to slide it down to the center of my project here. And then I'm going to even it up. Let me get you close. So I'm going to even it up to where my beads are nicely laying on both sides. My wire is coming through nicely and my wires are laying parallel to each other not crisscrossed give a little tug out like this so that they stay there while you crimp it pick up your regular crimp pliers or you can use your little round bead ones now um most people aren't going to have these this is what i used on my last one was a um the uh, round crimpers which makes the little crimp look like a circle and you don't have to use that you can use your regular crimpers just because I didn't demonstrate this I'm going to go ahead and use it in this one but as I said you do not have to have this one what I do is there's a little divot in the center here I place my crimp bead in the center and I squeeze and then I just circulate the crimp pliers around until I turn my little crimp bead into a little round circle. So you just have to keep doing it. Just rotating it around, crimping and crimping and crimping until you get it into a little round circle like this. And then just test it, make sure it crimped and it did. It's fine. So the only problem with doing that is now it kind of moved my wires around a little bit and my 11 O's around a little bit and it's not absolutely perfect but it's not bad either it's it'll it'll be okay um, but I'd rather not have any of my wire showing if I could um, crimp it push it down better I would but I cannot now it's crimped it's the way it is and I'm just going to give a tug on both my wires to straighten them out like so And then I'm going to put them back together. Actually, I shouldn't have straightened them out yet, but I'm going to put them back together. And then I'm going to take an 8 seed bead and I am going to put it both wires through it and bring it down. Oops, get another one. Come here, bead. It wants to be picky. There we go. And I'm going to bring it down to the center here. So now I've got my 
three eleven O's. I've got it crimped and then I brought down another bead here. And then I want to separate my wires out just to kind of stretch them a little bit and make it to where when I start stringing my other beads it'll be more of a V shape. So now that I've done that I will cut open a strand of my crystals here and I will begin to string. So what I'm going to do is every other bead I am going to put on um, a spacing bead which will be my 8-0's. But first, just because this part here is skinny and close together and I want it to lay correctly, I'm going to use 3-11-0's on each side. So I'll pick up 3-11-0's on this wire which is my right wire. If I can get them on my wire. So I've got three 11 O's and I'm going to bring it down to the center and then I'm going to get three more 11 O's, bring it down to the center even everything up and that's what you should have. Let me show you. Just like that. And now you can start stringing a crystal and then an 8 and then a crystal then an 8 but I'm going to start with an 8 first and then I'm going to string a crystal and then I'm going to string an 8 and then <laughs> yeah flying 8 and then I'm going to string a crystal and I'm just going to keep doing that till I get close to my end and then I will count how many I put on this side and do exactly the same thing on this side so I will just continue like I said just putting on my crystals, just stringing them on with an 8 seed bead in between. And we will do that all the way until you get about an inch from the top of your wire or you can measure it on your bead board like so. And lay your crystal, let me back off, lay your crystal right in the center of your bead board right here and then stretch your wire up and you can measure it. So if I want to make a 20 inch necklace, I'm going to keep stringing until I get right to this 10 here and then I'm going to stop. I'm going to count the beads I put on. I just count the crystals because I know I'm going to put an 8-0 in between and then I'll do the exact same thing on the other side, the same count. And then we'll be back and we'll clasp the ends. So just go ahead and string both sides to the length you want and then we will return. Okay, so as you can see, I have strung all of my beads until I'm to the length that I'm satisfied with. And I have strung on about 41 crystal beads with an 8-0 seed bead in between. I started with an 8-0 and I have finished with an 8-0. Now I've got about an inch and a half or so of my beading wire here left so that I can clasp. So I'm going to take one of my crimp beads and slide it on my wire here and then I'm going to go through the clasp. Now I'm using medium beading wire and I'm using small beads and um, it doesn't want to slide through my beads very well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through just the crimp bead here again and pull it through, push it through. Well actually it went through my 8-0 so that's good. Let's get you close so you can see what I've done. So I've just wrapped around, gone through my clasp and I'm coming through the crimp bead and the 8-0 and then I'm just going to pull this down like so leaving myself just a little tiny bit of slack. I don't want my beads to be really tight, but I don't want them really loose either. So I'm going to butt that 8-0 up against the crystal here. Let's just see what's going on. But I'm going to have just a little bit of length and because, or a little bit of slack there, and because my wire is coming out there, that will allow me just about enough. So I'm going to make my loop around my um, clasp about so big, just enough to where it'll move around. You don't want it pulled really tight up against your crimp bead because for one thing, you won't be able to crimp. For another, your clasp won't move on your um, 
necklace very well. So you want to have a loop that will allow it to move. And then you want to line up your crimp bead, hold on to it like so, and now I'm going to use my regular crimp pliers and I'm going to put the flat side towards my beads and in the first, or the one that's furthest back, this little divot here, you can see on one side it has like a little crinkle and on the other side it's just a round divot. You're going to use that first. So I'm going to put that flat part against my beads like so, or towards my beads. I'm going to line it, line it up on my crimp bead and I'm going to squeeze. And now I have two little tubes that are encasing each side of the wire. So when you come up through, make sure you hold your wire parallel to itself so that when you crimp, you don't want it crisscrossed. When you crimp, you will have your crimp bead encasing both wires, both sides, like so. And then you're going to take the second side and I'm going to turn this to the side so that my fold, my crease right here, is away from me and then I'm going to use the first divot right here in my crimp pliers and I'm going to squeeze the two little tubes together like so. Now I've shown this in my previous video with stringing basic, basics. I've explained it very clearly and very slowly so that if you didn't get it here, you can get it there. Now I am just going to take my wire cutters and I'm going to cut my wire off right here, like so. Now I have my clasp on and I have it crimped. Now I have decided that I wanted to use a crimp cover. So I've got this little crimp cover, it's shaped like a little clamshell or like a little snail shell, something like that. I am going to put my crimp bead right inside this little clamshell. And nothing is working smoothly, but we're going to slide it <laughs> right in there. Oh, come on, okay. There we go. So you can see, after a little bit of struggle, I have got my crimp bead down into the bottom of the U part of the shape of the um, clamshell here. Just like so. Then I'm going to take my flat nose pliers and I am just going to squeeze this clamshell shut. Now you can see there's a little crease there. So I am going to take my pliers and I'm just going to go over the top of it gently while pushing forward and down and close that so that it closes like a snail closes or like a roly-poly like so. You'll always see a bit of the crease, that's the nature of it, but you want to close it as much as you can, like so. Now my end is finished really pretty, you can't see my crimp bead, and everything looks really nice. So that's how you will end your project. So now what we're going to do is we're going to count exactly how many beads are on this side and we're going to do the exact same thing on this side. I've started with my 8 -0. I have my three little 11 O's that we did in the beginning of the video and I just left it on there and I have my 8 -0 seed bead to start my stringing and then I will just start picking up my crystals and my 8 -0s, and I will just continue to string them until I have exactly the same amount on this side as I do on this side and then I will do the same exact thing with this part of the clasp and I will use my crimp bead and my clamshell and then we will be back. Okay so I have done my other half, I'll show you, and this is what it looks like. Now I want to make sure that this side is nice, that there's not a bunch of buckling space here or anything, because in this particular design, if there's any slack down here, it's not going to hang right. So you want to make sure that it looks really nice, that both sides are exactly the same, and they are. And now I have slid my crimp bead on. 
I put my wire up through my clasp, just like on the other side. Get close to you here. And I want to make sure that the loop on this side is about the same size as the loop on this side. So this one's a little smaller, so I'll just pull my wire a little bit tighter, ensuring that the 8 is still like right on top. Make sure that uh, right on top of the crystal here, make sure that the crimp bead is right on top of the 8 and I'm just adjusting the size of my loop. I want to make sure it's about the same size as the other side. Otherwise, you'll have an uneven amount. And that's about the same size now. Now, I just want to make sure that my wire is running through parallel to itself. So, now that it's through, I want them to lay side by side. And again, I will take my crimp bead and I will go to the furthest back divot on it and I will squeeze. And now I have encased both of my ends of my wire in two little tubes like so. Now I'm going to turn this to the side so that my little crease is away from me or towards me. Either way it doesn't matter. Pick up my crimp beads or my crimp pliers and I will again squeeze my crimp bead in the first divot and squeeze the two little tubes together. And you can give it an extra squeeze. On the very tip here it's flat just to make sure that it's nice and tight and it's not going to slip. Pull on it a little, make sure that it cramped, and it did. And you can see I have a little bit of space for my beads to move around on my, um, my necklace without compromising the way that the centerpiece lays. And then I am going to cut my wire off real close to this 80 where it's coming out because I slid it through the crimp and the 80 and then I crimped it. Now I am again going to pick up my um, crimp bead cover, my little snail shape, and I am going to, or roly poly is what it reminds me of. Then I'm going to slide the crimp down inside the little roly poly here and arrange it to where I can handle it like so. And then I'm going to pick up my flat nose pliers and without squeezing that 8 because it's glass and I'll break it, I'm just going to shut this. And then I'm going to go over the top of it and shape it. I hope I'm staying in camera. Let me back off. So all I'm doing is closing it just like I did on the other side and then I'll go over the top of it and kind of shape it and squeeze it together. And just play with it until it looks like you want it to. They're never perfect. I used to try to get them perfect and there was just no way to do it. And it used to always disappoint me. Now I just do it and not worry about it. And that's what that looks like. Now, I'm going to show you what the necklace we just made looks like. Get it all in camera here. And that, my dear beaters, is what you've just made. And here's the other one I made, so you can see how pretty they are. Now, if you find the top of your bead is a little thicker than mine or whatever, you will need to adjust the amount of 11 O's. I could have gotten away with putting four on either side just so that my pendant moved a little smoother. But it worked out fine. It's okay. And I, I like it. So I'm happy with it. And that's what matters. But as you do these stringing projects, that's what's so wonderful about stringing is you just do whatever you want to do however you want to do it. You don't have to follow a pattern. You don't have to use the exact same beads that you saw me use or anything else. You just get an idea and you do it. And if you have to rework it a couple of times, rework it a couple of times. But you can do all kinds of creative things with your crimping and you can make all kinds of different um, 
strands. You can make three or four strands. You can use all seed beads, whatever you want. You can use a smaller type of um, wire than I've used, like a tiger's tail, a small one. And you can loop through several strands through one crimp bead and make um, five or six strands of beads together in a bracelet or however you want to do it. And I'll show you a few other ways. There are clasps that have uh, several um, loops on them that you can make strands with so it holds your strands apart and you have a nice um, three strand bracelet. There's all kinds of different ways of doing it. But I just wanted to show you that you are never stuck with just putting a clasp on. You can do different types and styles of necklaces and bracelets and so on and so forth. Just get creative with it. Don't worry about doing exactly what you've seen. Just do it the way you want to do it and figure something out. That's the best part about stringing. I hope you enjoyed this project. See you later. Bye-bye.